Hello, boys and girls. It seems like it's been forever since we were last together. In fact, I think it's been a month since I was last in the classroom with you. I do hope you all are doing well and surviving during this time of being at home and getting homework, uh, schoolwork done, computer work, and, and doing homeschooling with your folks. Anyway, I wanted to uh, talk today about our Resurrection Day. I'll say a phrase. I want you to repeat it, okay? He is risen. Good. He is risen indeed. Good. Thank you for saying that. Now, I wanted to have something I could do to remind myself of the important parts of this week. And so I've made a cross to represent Friday. And of course, an empty tomb to represent today. Jesus went to the cross on a Friday. To, uh, he was sufficient because he is God the Son. He is sufficient and without sin. And so his sacrifice on the cross was more than enough to cover the sin of every single boy, child, every child, uh, mother, uh, every man, woman, and child, there we go, who has ever lived or will ever live, and all the sin that they have done. Sin is so serious, boys and girls. It separates us from God. So, I made a cross, and I, looking around to see what I could find, I found an empty toilet paper roll, and I found a piece of brown construction paper. So I thought, first, I need to know how wide this cross is going to be after I've wrapped it onto the toilet paper roll. So I quick rolled it up. Nothing good, no glue, nothing like that. Just, just to give it a try. Okay, make sure my ends are pretty even. When I measured it, I discovered it was about one and three-fourths of an inch. Then I thought, all right, I need a cross beam coming out. So I'm going to cut somehow in here. But I want it to be one and three-fourths of an inch wide. So then I took out the toilet paper roll, got my scissors, approximated where I wanted to do it. You don't have to approximate. You can go ahead and measure if you would prefer so you, have, you know exactly where you're going to cut. But don't cut all the way through. Cut on this side, cut on this side, and continue the cut but stop. So you still have an inch and three-fourths in the middle. All right? Then come up about an inch and three-fourths and do it again and stop just above the previous cut so it's still open in the middle. Then come to the top of your paper and cut down to the cut and again on this side come down to the cut and again you want this width to be one and three-fourths of an inch. These pieces will fall off now so the top of your paper will look like this. Looks like the beginning of a cross, doesn't it? Now roll the rest up around that toilet paper tube, nice and tight, make sure your ends are level, and then staple here, and staple up here, and the toilet paper tube itself is down here, which is fine. We just need it to help it stand. And then use some glue stick and just tuck it under the edge here of the paper so that you can get it to lay more flat. And bring your cross pieces forward and your cross is done. Now for the tomb. I knew I had some lunch bags. So I pulled one out. And this is my husband multiply smashed now, but I pulled it out, opened it, and then smashed it. I reopened it and began the process of rolling down the top as best I could. By the time I was done, I had maybe five inches or so left of the bag. I made my circle or my, the uh, opening as round as I could. And so that was my tomb. Then inside I put a piece of just a paper napkin, a white paper napkin. I cut off a strip and put it in there to represent the wrappings that were on Jesus' body. Now, my tomb and my cross are done. Why did Jesus do this? He did this because of our sin. He loved us so much, he did not want us to be separated from God forever. And so he made a way, according to God's plan, the plan was put into effect long before he ever made the world. All right, He had a plan that he would return at a particular time and take care of our sin problem. So, when we think about our sin, what do we think of? Number one, God rules. He is the one in charge. He made everything. He sustains everything. He can't be around sin. He is a holy God. He is the one that rules. We sinned. Sin started with the very first man and woman, Adam, Adam and Eve, and has been passed all the way down the line to us. We sin every day. When you listen to your mom or your dad say it's time to do your chores, and yet you continue what you're doing, 
that's sinful. <laughs> All right. When you see mom or dad carrying something, maybe a load of laundry, and something falls on the floor, do you rush over there to pick it up? No? That's sin. How about when you're reminded it's time now to, um, to work on your, home, your schoolwork? Do you pretend like you didn't hear them? Do you run and hide? Oh my, that's sin. See, you need a savior. I do too. I accepted Jesus a long time ago, but I had to understand I had sin. I didn't understand that for a long time, but we all do boys and girls. Now, the nice thing is that since God rules, he's in charge, we sinned, but God provided. He provided a way that we could have salvation and be restored to him again. And he provided that way through Jesus, through his son. Then Jesus gives at the right time, he was born into flesh, God, the Son, was born into flesh so he could live and die. Because God can't die. He had to take on flesh to be able to die for us. He went to the cross to purchase a wonderful gift for us, the gift of salvation. But it required that Jesus pay the cost of our debt, our sin debt, all the punishment we should get because of our sin was put on Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that for us because now he's given us this precious gift of forgiveness. But in order to have that gift of forgiveness, we need to respond. We need to respond by making a, cho a, ch uh, a choice for him. We've learned admit, believe, confess, the ABCs of salvation. Admit that you are a sinner, repent, and turn away from doing those sins. B, believe, believe that Jesus is God's son, Believe what the Bible says, that he went to the cross for you and for me, for all of us. Took our sin on himself, died, and then rose again three days later, Resurrection Day. And then confess. Confess your faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord, and ask him to be your boss. And then, of course, obey him. All right? So we have those opportunities, that opportunity to do that once we understand the seriousness of our sin. This is what Jesus accomplished for us between Friday and Sunday. Dying on the cross for us to pay for our sin so he could offer us forgiveness. Rising on the third day, the resurrection day, that Sunday. Showing that indeed he is God's son. That his sacrifice was more than sufficient for us. And that that gift is now extended to us. The gift of eternal life and forgiveness of our sins. How will you respond? Well, boys and girls, I can't make you make a decision. That's between you and God. But Holy Spirit will let you know when that time is. Now, I want to do some backtracking for a moment. Because in one of your workbooks, we had some questions. But they're set up kind of like a rhyme. And they review four of the days of this past week. Let's review the days real quickly. Last Sunday was uh, Palm Sunday. Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on the colt of a donkey and the people were so praising God and thanking him and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to God in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. On Monday, the Gospel of Mark tells us Jesus went back into the temple to take care of a problem that he had seen. And that problem was the money uh, cha changers that were there. They, they were clogging up the Gentile court, so there was no place for the Gentiles to go and worship. The uh, Gentile court would have been the farthest out within the temple complex, so it would still be considered a part of the temple, but not in the section close to the temple. It was farthest away. All right, so he went in there and he drove out those money changers. And he drove out the sellers of doves and he released the doves and he would not let anyone go through that was merchandising or carrying merchandise with them. Then he sat down and he taught the people. On Tuesday and Wednesday, he continued teaching. On Thursday, we have the Last Supper where he and the disciples ate together in the upper room and then Jesus established what the new covenant would be in his blood and in his body. And after that, he went to Gethsemane, was arrested, and then into Friday, he went through many, many trials, seeing different individuals who just wanted to condemn him. Jesus consented to everything that happened and ended up on the cross by God's plan. It was all part of the plan 
and then by 3 p.m. he had died, was removed from the cross before the sun set, and was buried. Come Sunday, again on that third day, he rose victorious, having purchased for us salvation and forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Now, those questions. These questions are in rhyming words, okay? So the word that needs to be put in at the end is going to rhyme with another word I will emphasize, all right? This first one happens last Sunday. It comes out of Matthew 21, verse 9. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he did not come with a sword, sword. The people shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the... Now, older kids, don't yell it out. <laughs> Give your younger siblings a chance to think about that rhyming word. All right? It's going to have to rhyme with sword. Don't tell them yet, though. Just hang on. All right, day two, which was that Monday. Uh, this comes from Matthew 21 again, verses 12 and 13. Dishonest people made Jesus grieve, grieve. You've made God's temple a den of... Again, don't yell out the answer. Help your younger siblings with it. <coughs> Number three, this comes from days, um, let's see, yesterday, this one I just did was from uh, Monday, and then this, this current one I'm going to do now is from days Tuesday and Wednesday. It's in chapter, Matthew 21, verse 23. Jesus taught truth about God, plain and simple. Simple as the people gathered around Jesus at the, thank you for not yelling it out. And the last question happens on Thursday. It's from Matthew 26, the first part of 26, Matthew 26, 26. Late in the day, the disciples were meeting, meeting at Jesus' last supper with them. They were there we go, boys and girls. I hope you find those rhyming answers. If you want to text me what they were, that would be very cool. Otherwise, let me pray with you and we're done. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for these children. And I ask that they might experience the joy of this time of year. And remember to tell everyone that they see as passerbys or that they talk to online. Jesus is alive. He loves you. Help them to have a good week even with the parts of their day that they may not enjoy as much, help them to find a way of doing it and to be thankful for the opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys. See you at some point. Bye.